June 12, 2013 marks the 20th anniversary of the annulment of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, widely acclaimed to have been won by the late Chief Moshu Dabiola. The military government at the time said it cancelled the election because of alleged fraud, but most Nigerians still believe that the election was the most transparent and freest in Nigeria's history. It is mainly for this reason that on June 12 of every year since 1993, pro-democracy activists usually converge to reflect on issues about the election and the man at the heart of it, the late MK Wabiola. It's been no different this year, where especially across the southwest of Nigeria, several events took place today to commemorate June 12, who went around all the events in Lagos. And this is what we covered, beginning from the one by Pastor Tunde Bakari's Save Nigeria group. I'm the custodian of a sacred mandate, freely given, which I cannot surrender unless the people so demand. That mandate may have given to the president-elect stands. I am, by June 12th, no one, no Nigerian can afford to forget or wish away June 12th. Indeed, 20 years after all those drama, June 12th still remains a hot topic, generating heated debates. No fighting, keeping quiet. But if there was one June 12th anniversary with a difference, then this was it. Different because for the first time since the yearly commemoration began, a serving government minister sat side by side opposition party members to listen to the government he serves roasted. If Mr. Labaran Maku, the information minister, was expecting a tough ride here, he got it from the get-go when the leader of the Save Nigeria group, an opposition party politician, Pastor Tunde Bakari, mounted the rostrum. There's still a lot missing in our governance. We, have still, we, have still, we still haven't come sufficiently close to free and fair elections. A lot of people are disenfranchised by poverty and illiteracy. We are largely excluded from the governance of our own country. And very critically, we lack good governance. Nigeria is far behind in almost every index that signifies progress and only takes the lead in the ones that signal retrogression. The pastor turned politician did not let off, hammering further at the government, with Mr. Maku taking notes at interval. Our poverty is optional. The primary reason our people are poor is because their leaders make poor policy choices and they do so because of their apparent lack of, of capacity, courage, and capacity as well as integrity to secure this nation and manage it well. After what seemed like an hour, the information minister's time came and he mounted a robust defense. Nobody is in government in an elected government to make his people unhappy. Nobody can go through the process because that's the truth of the matter. In this government, I can tell you something, that I am in a government that I believe has put forward certain ideas and is working on them to address some of the very, very many issues that the Mr. Bakari has put forward. If his boss, the president, was watching, Mr. Maku would surely at this point get a pat on the back. And yet, he wasn't even done. Because we're in government today, we are sorry, we are not able to give you 24 hours electricity yet. But are we on the road to doing so? Listen to me. Are we on the road to doing so? Yes. Let me explain. Thank you. Thank you. You can say no. But listen to me. I have. Listen to me. And I think, like I say, it's a democratic exchange. I am convinced, as a member of cabinet, that we are on the way to getting power stable in Nigeria. Why do I say so? Listen to me. How? One. 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 Not because of what we are doing. One. Because right now, 
power like telecoms is leading the hands of government bureaucracies. That's the, that's the number one reason. Power like telecoms is not leaving the hands of government bureaucracies. Power is moving back to the private sector, and we have just unveiled a process where different companies around the world have bought shares, are taking over transmission, are taking over distribution. But the fireworks did not end there. Things got more fired up when Dino Melaye, a former member of the House of Representatives and fiery critic of the Jonathan administration, was handed the microphone. We need a president in 2015 that knows Nigeria. We need a president in 2015 that will roll up his sleeves. We need a president in 2015 that will supervise projects and not just commissioning projects. As I speak to you, the indices by the Minister of Information and indeed the Minister of Finance and many other ministers in terms of GDP, GNP, inflation, and all those figures. How does that have any positive concomitant effect on the price of the market? Our own GDP is this. When President Jonathan came to power in 2011, the price of one bag of rice is 8500 Today it is 12000 that's my GDP. My GDP is that when President Jonathan came to power in 2011, a Mudu of Gary was sold for 200, 200, is it 250 or 250 naira now? But today it is 600. That is my GNP. The minister didn't take those words lying low, demanding a right of reply, and he got it. On all the things that my brother has said, he's not saying it for the first time. I've had him on different theaters. <laughs> they came, yeah, because this is what you call perfect laboratory. I've had him in different theaters making these proclamations. Some of those cases, like he mentioned, against some of the ministers, they are in court with him. So I don't want to intervene, and I don't want to enter there. There are some other issues. For example, before I joined government, I never could ever believe that the 16 billion that was alleged to have already been spent on power. Much of the money had not been paid. Some of the contractors had not even really gone to site. But the reality is that Listen, when people make those proclamations, the truth is the fact that a lot of it is hasty. By every stretch of the imagination, this was more like a tug of war between two camps, those on the side of the current administration in the country and those on the other side. I am not holding brief for the president, but my opinion is this. As much as we may have seen the president in the past as slow, his scorecard of what he has done so far came to some of us as a surprise, including me, particularly as I am record as having complained in the past, especially when it comes to the lack of development in the Niger Delta region and the environmental devastation that we suffer. Grow without solid infrastructure. Economy cannot grow on 8%, 9%, 10% without postal services, without highways being paid very well, without electricity supply, without people coming out of school and going to work. This is what we are saying. I have never seen any president of Nigeria that talked about job creation. You can say it, but you are not doing it. Yet another first since the June 12 celebration is a speech by the first son of the late chief MKO Abiola Kola, who all these years had shied away from giving public speeches on a course his father had died for. We went to the polls 20 years ago. As 
United Nigeria, we went as United Nigeria. We went as youth, old, Christian, Muslim, pagan, names. Military, non-military police, special forces, SSS. We all went to vote because we were voting for one man who we believe believed in one Nigeria. But over the years, 20 years later, we have become totally divided. We're talking about the North trying to disrupt the leadership of the Southwest. We're talking about a, a scenario where even within our collective states, there's crisis. The amount of communal cash is going on within our collective states alone. Forget the national thing about the Boko Haram. Just look within our collective states and the amount of killings we do. Communal. Where is that in United Nigeria? Because we will not, if, if we don't have a United Nigeria, we will not be here talking about Jonesville. It becomes a null and void because it does, that sort of entity does not exist anymore. So whatever we do, we should be looking at leadership that is blind and is blind to our respective zones. We should look at leadership that provides us with one Nigeria. The Save Nigeria group had tagged the event a democracy audit. Of course, it was an audit, but it was certainly not a one-sided audit. But the government and the opposition gave their separate audits. Which one the audience will be taking home as a real thing remains a matter of conjecture. In a separate event, the Odua People's Congress attracted quite a sizable crowd to its own lecture in commemoration of the June 12, 1993 election. Guest lecturer was Alji Uzo Kalu, the former governor of Abia State. The anomaly of June 12 and the political class is participated as a great danger to continue the existence of Nigeria as one. This is why the topic of this lecture today is very relevant to 20 years after June 12, options for survival. As to how the country can truly move forward drawing lessons from June 12, this is what Mr. Kalu had to say. What are the options if we are to continue as a united entity? A country will eventually become a true nation. There are many options available for Nigeria. If we want to become a true nation, but today I will focus on a trade, so I'll just on trade. One is social justice, fighting a workable electoral process and nurturing our democracy. For almost an hour, the former governor kept his audience attentive. He was not the only speaker. The more united we are, the more assertive we are, the more we insist that until the convocation of the Southern National Conference, there will not be any leeway for peace, justice, fairness, and liberty. All of us must stop agonizing. We must organize for change. We must rise up. We do not have any other country except Nigeria. So all of us must be dedicated ourselves. We must also ensure that every Abiola did not die in vain. Outside the event, other pro-democracy activists say the injury left by the annulment of the June 12 election remains unhealed, insisting that the date is a true democracy day. The philosophy of MKO, if I have to give you a blueprint, has, it encompasses the welfare of the people in terms of health, in terms of education, in terms of road, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of security, in terms of electricity. These, these are the things, these are the journeys, as far as I'm concerned, that we read, and that's why we embrace MKO that by now, if the man was allowed to govern, most of these things would have been banished. 20 years on, the legacies of the June 12 election still live on, serving as a template for true democracy in Nigeria. And so another June 12 anniversary has come and gone. There have been so much talk. Action is what should follow next. By this time next year, we will be auditing all the actions that would have followed from all the talks. I am Deji Badimasi, and you've been watching a TV360 special on June 12th.